please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Life has a habit of handing you a long list of things to do. Now that could range anywhere between planning a vacation to planning your children's education fund. And let's not forget retirement planning, tax planning and a whole lot of other planning. So where do you start? How do you manage your money better? Don't worry, that's where we come in. Hello and welcome to NSC Finvis Season 5, part by CNBC TV18. I'm your host, Gautam Srinivasan, and today we are at the head office of one of India's largest agri commodity management companies, the National Bulk Handling Corporation. Founded in 2003, National Bulk Handling Corporation or NBHC has become a leading provider of integrated commodity and collateral management services in India. Recognized for its world-class solutions and trusted risk management practices, NBHC is also known for providing best in industry practices when it comes to procurement, handling and storage of agri-commodities. The company also has the widest Pan India warehousing presence with more than 2,000 plus warehouses across 23 states in India. NSC Finviz with its theme, Dream On, engaged with the employees of NBHC in Mumbai to offer some tips on investment rather than storage of their wealth. We are very keen to associate with Finviz so that we can adequately explain and bring out financing options or investing options to our teams for their personal investments. The inculcation of what and how you create wealth for yourself going forward is very important simply because uh, wealth management essentially is a systematic, decisive, proactive, well-planned approach to your financial and monetary well-being for the long term. Salary is what you would get on a periodic basis to a specific period of time. Thereafter, it's your wealth management that you created, you know, which will sustain you throughout going forward. Hello and welcome to NSC Finviz Season 5, part by CNBC TV 18. Uh, the topic of discussion today is why invest in equities? Uh, it's a very important question to address, although it might be common now. Uh, we have with us a panel of experts to answer that very question. Uh, we have Firoz Aziz and Gajendra Kothari, and of course, the working professionals here at the National Bulk Handling Corporation. Uh, we are going to have a very interesting discussion on this topic. So we'll start with you, uh, Firoz. Why invest in equities, judging by the performance we've had of equities over the past year, the fantastic performance over the past six sessions, I guess the markets, both the Nifty and Sensex, have grown close to 2%. Now, the first question here people would have is, have I missed the bus if, say, uh, people have not started investing in equities? See, if you have read in the newspapers, a new peak, markets are a high every day, because market has been creating, it has created almost about 57 highs uh, in the last year. It has created new highs 57 times out of the 250 times it would have opened. So, of course, it's overwhelming information of a peak. But it's not the way you should look at it. You should look at it for the last 10 years. What is the returns Nifty has generated, for example? There lies the good news that it has generated only about 8 to 9 percent. Is that an overwhelmingly large return for a decade per annum? The answer is no. Historically, for 30 years, it has generated 15%. But the last 10 years has just been 7 8%. But if you see this so frequently on the newspapers, you start, start to believe that the party is over. So please start with it. But having said which, the most important thing is get your principles right. If you have not got your principles right, then you would definitely be disappointed if you don't know how to have the art of managing this animal, which is called equity. All right. Uh, so he, uh, looking at it from uh, the perspective, following up on what uh, Firoz had mentioned, there's also uh, the mindset about, you know, whether to invest directly in stocks or invest directly in funds. Earlier, investing directly in stocks was seen as sign, kind of a hobby that if I have spare time, I'll do some research and invest directly in stocks. Is investing in equity mutual funds the new normal, Gajendra, in your opinion? You know, you need to have interest uh, in, in buying companies. You need to have a greater amount of interest. After having interest, you need to have knowledge as well. Okay? Without knowledge, you will not go much far. You need to also have commit time. You have to understand the balance sheet, their business models, uh, you know, their, their revenue components. So it takes a lot of time. And to read such 500 balance sheets which are listed, it's, it's, going, to, it's going to require full-time profession. So it's best left to mutual fund professionals, which are fund managers, 
whose only job is to manage your money 24 by 7. All right. What would you advise to people who are invested, who want to invest over a longer period of time to attain their financial goals? How do they handle that volatility? Fortunately, investing has got no gray shades. It's got hardcore mathematics, and mathematics generally doesn't lie or, or does not produce ambiguous output. So when it is evident that any 10-year investor, okay, in the past, from, for example, 1992, 1993, is when the private sector mutual fund industry was uh, liberalized and you saw the first private sector mutual fund. From that day, every day, if there was a 10-year investor, the worst return in the first few funds is 11% a year. The most unluckiest investor has made 11% a year. Not to say that you can't discover a further unluckier person, but data is overwhelmingly saying that time frame, the time you stay invested, who is the decision maker other than you? There's nobody else. So who will decide whether you can stay for 10 years? It's only you because you are the signatory. If you could take a call that I can close my eyes and turn a blind eye to this volatility, then last 28 years, 25 years, clearly says that the 10-year investor has made 11%, which is the worst. The highest has been 33. Now, large probability that your returns would be in this range. Not to say that it can't exceed or, or, or underperform this range, but that's enough comfort, point one. Every time you are wanting some reassurance, <coughs> whether I'm on the right path, just look at this data, it'll give you some reassurance. Point two, if you have large quantums of money invested, which is your hard-earned money, use risk management techniques. One of them, which I'm mentioning, is a leap. And in a, in a forum like this, only curiosity can be created. The entire explanation might not be uh, produced at this stage. All right. On that note, uh, I think uh, we'll take a short break. Uh, uh, but when we return, we'll be discussing more on the, the finer points of why to invest in equity. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. Now, we've been discussing why to invest in equity. So let's take a deep dive on that topic again. Now, uh, diversification is always seen as a safe bet where you have, you know, your short term ones, your liquid funds, uh, you know, in place for your immediate or, or, or safer needs. And then you have your equities for a longer term horizon. Tell us about portfolio diversification. How does this work? Diversification and risk mitigation in the form of putting some money aside for the rainy day in deposits and debt is a thing which is very, very important. So in the short run, you have one risk, which is volatility. In the long run, inflation is a risk. We have to, the strategy has to strike a balance between these. So it's important that you have a review on a yearly basis with your advisor to make sure that that asset allocation is being reviewed. But 100% one asset is a, a complacent approach and only a mathematics approach, which is not right. You will have to make sure that you create a balance. All right. And Gajendra, shifting focus, uh, we have to talk about tax planning. As with any audience, they'll be interested in knowing you know, how exactly do you navigate this maze of tax planning when it comes to investing in equity funds. Could you give us a few points on you know what works and what doesn't? Tax planning, uh, under Section ATC, also you have a variety of options. Uh, because you are employed, uh, you know you would have uh, EPF anyway deducting from your bank account. Uh, many of you would have been also doing PPF if you have any surplus left. Okay. Uh, personally, I think uh, PPF is a very safe investment, okay? Uh, it gives you 7.6 right now, guaranteed return. But my suggestion is that if you are in for a long haul, PPF is a 15-year long product. In, if you can anyway wait for 15 years, I would suggest go for ELSS, which is Equity Link Saving Scheme. Equity Link Saving Scheme over the last 15 years, 20 years, has given much better return compared to PPF. In fact, the average returns have been around 15 to 18%. Equity funds are far more tax efficient because after one year, it qualifies as long-term capital gains. Okay, You don't have to pay any tax after one year. So if you've invested one lakh, after 15 years, if it has become 50 lakhs, entire 50 lakhs is yours. Right? It's tax-free. On the other hand, debt funds or fixed deposits, you have to pay 10, 20, 30% tax bracket depending on tax bracket you fall into. Even in debt funds, you have to pay 20% tax after indexation. So 
equity is a better option compared to debt as far as the tax planning is concerned. And now another aspect of investing is, you know, the key goal, one of the key goals is of course retirement planning because at the end of the day, that's the period which you enter where you're not earning and your investments really need to be, uh, you know, saving your life for you in terms of the returns. So could you give us a few pointers on what the audience here needs to do in terms of basic a basic checklist for retirement planning and how you know investing in equities can help uh, them in that end but because usually when it comes to retirement planning people say okay you've invested in equity say till 55 uh, 56 and then now you should start start of moving your assets into more safer options retirement has a big advantage of helping you use the most prominent thing in finance called power of compounding power of compounding is advantageous to people for long periods of time and retirement has so much time for you. One lakh rupee invested for 10 years at 12% will become 3 lakhs. That's a gain of 2 lakh rupees in the first 10 years. Let's assume I extend my investment for 20 more years and make it a total of 30 years. Okay, the same 1 lakh for 30 years in at 12% will leave you with how much money? 30 lakh rupees. So the first 10 years earned you 2 lakhs. The subsequent 20 years earned you how much? 27 lakhs. This phenomena is called power of compounding. So this can only be advantageous if you had 30 years. If you had only 10 years, then power of compounding only gave you 2 lakhs on that 1 lakh. But if you had 20 more years, which retirement will leave you with 20 more years, if you start early, the same 1 lakh in the subsequent two decades earned you 27 lakhs as against 2 lakhs. So that's power of compounding. And if you understood this, you retire rich. So uh, let's get in some uh, members of the audience to list out the goals uh, that they have in mind, which they specified in the cue cards. First name I'd like to call out is Digan Daga. As a new uh, investor in equity, what should be my approach when I start investing in stocks? Doing direct equity for a starter is a complete no-no. Why is it a complete no-no? Direct equity is like, is like a 10th class exam. If you have not finished the first grade, second grade, third grade, doing the 10th grade, and then saying, oh, I failed the exam, I'm not meant to be qualifying, is not the conclusion to be derived. So point one, very strongly, I suggest against it. Why? Because people generally see all their neighbors, their friends make money, and that becomes the motivation to start. And that's when everybody has made money in good times, making money is relatively easy. But in bad times, you will need a person. So mutual fund is the only vehicle a new investor should use. Point two, so there has to be an advisor who is going to handhold you during the turbulent times to make sure that you live the course. Your goals are long term. Your strategy has to be long-term. All right, Rita Gupta. My long-term goal is to set up a shelter home for stray and abandoned dogs. Uh, the time horizon that I see uh, it will take is minimum 15 to 20 years because the amount that it requires is about, I think, not less than 50 to 75 lakhs. Right. And uh, on a monthly basis, you can save about 20 to 25, which uh, right. you would l look to increase over a period of yes, time? Yes, of course. Uh, I have given this amount uh, looking to the existing uh, salary that I earn. Just go to online. Many online websites have SIP calculators, wherein if you can put, uh, if you want 75 lakhs at the end of 15 years, they will do a reverse calculation. In two minutes, you will know that how much amount you are supposed to save on a monthly basis, right? So if for 75 lakhs, let's say the answer comes 30,000. Today, your capacity is, let's say, 15 to 20,000. You should not be disappointed. You know, start with what you have, 15,000, OK? There's a beautiful concept in mutual funds called step up SIP, OK? Just like your salary goes up every year, maybe by 5% or 10%, you can increase your SIP automatically by 5% every year. It's time for another short break here on NSC FinWiz Season 5, but we'll be right back. Stay tuned to CNBC TV 18. I invest in equities. That's the theme of discussion today. And it's time now to open the floor to the audience to ask any questions that they would have to our panelists here on the topic. So let's have a show of hands. Who wants to ask a question to our panelists? All right, we'll start with you, sir. So my question is, if my savings is 20,000, 
so how how i diversify my savings like 5000 investment in equities 5000 in like uh, mutual funds you spent your savings in buying a home yeah. that's what you're yeah. saying and now you want now to want use to your like, savings yeah. to travel the world you have to be very clear when do you want to achieve this goal you have to give a timeline okay it can't be an open ended thing you know you need to figure out what's the cost today okay and then take inflation so if, if the cost of traveling across the world is let's say uh, 25 lakhs you know i'm just giving a hypothetical number uh after 5 years that number won't be 25 lakhs it may be 35 lakhs or 40 lakhs depending on the inflation right and then the next level is what vehicle to choose okay if it is a 5 10 year goal go with a balanced fund or a diversified equity fund and just stay there i'm sure you'll be able to achieve your goal all right let's have a question from the back all right the lady there in the yellow uh, outfit uh right now i open my dmat account with uh, some broking agency jarda uh, which is not well known but uh, i am investing for a long term but uh, in case uh, it is get a defaulter because i am signing that power of attorney with him that he can sell my shares and uh, with my concern only but in case of default he can sell my shares or what he can do with my investment investments he can do it dmat accounts are not controlled by the broker unless you have transferred whatever is there in your custody in the dmat account into a margin account of the broker so if you are not doing any complex trades in a market called derivative market you don't need to sign the power of attorney so point 1 avoid a dmat account if it's mutual fund if you still have to open one don't sign a power of attorney unless you're going into a uh, derivative segment if you have not signed a power of attorney the dmat account irrespective of whichever be the broker unknown known big small doesn't matter the custodians will generally be two entities called cdsl or nsdl uh, which are safer custodians at depositories as we call them uh, so those are the guys who would control your holdings in the dmat account and you will not have to worry all right let's get another question from this side yes sir the, the gentleman in the white shirt whether it is time to uh, manage my fund where i churn it every times when i see that it is peak everyone is speaking about it for the time sometime i be cautious i move everything from equity and move it to the debt fund till market starts speaking about that the bottom has been formed so whether a balance between this because i am not taking it is risk directly going it to equity still i am taking the benefit of the market's ups and downs and there is a portfolio manager the mutual fund um, uh, fund manager who's helping me because i am going with the fund which is suitable for that condition of the market if you keep churning money it's your either your broker or your agent who is going to make more money and not you i'll give you my own example for the last 8 9 years i've been investing my money in a systematic investment planning manner sip okay into 6 7 funds and my cgr has been 22% for the last 8 years okay some of these funds have given as high as 30% some of the other funds has given as low as 13% i have not switched funds i have not flipped things i am looking at the aggregate level what is my portfolio given which is 22% tax free which is absolutely wonderful okay now if you if you are in for long term like 5 10 years okay by being there by just enjoying the power of compounding you will be able to reach your goals but the moment you start looking at these whatsapp messages forwards and you know uh, in the newspapers press and your what your friend says the more activity you do in your portfolio the lesser your returns going to be all right on that note we'll wrap up uh, this episode of nsc finvest season 5 part by cnbc tv 18 the theme of discussion has been investing in equities i'd like to thank our panel of experts for sharing their insights on the topic and of course the wonderful professionals here who joined us for a very engaging q and a and of course the audience watching at home we've hope you've learned some lessons on money management keep watching cnbc tv 18 Uh, in our busy life at corporate uh, chasing monthly targets and quarterly targets we really lose focus on personal investments so in in spite of being a finance professional uh, i think it was uh, great uh, learning here uh, selecting the right kind of investment is uh, what i have learned today retirement plan is amazing thing plan your goals and accordingly start saving and start investing investing is not only about tax saving thing so what that is what i have learned today a lot of mental fog has got cleared especially in terms of investing in equity uh, i think uh, the panel was pretty sharp uh, very specific in terms of how you need to invest 
what kind of mindset that you need to have what strategy you need to have so i think a lot of things have got cleared after attending this session today's session has actually empowered me with a number of avenues for investment opportunities that i can bank on and also in terms of the direction that it has given to me for making wise investment planning in future